Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of BeoCast with Bart Kwan and Gio Kwan, myself. Uh, I'm proud to announce that this podcast is brought to you by one of my favorite bra companies, Third Love. Oh, yeah. Did you know that you know you're clean if you scr- scratch your taint and it <laughs> smells fresh? Uh, I'm guessing you did that right now. Yes. Why, why your taint gets... So taint is the area between the butthole and the scrotum. And the ball sack, the chode too. Wait, chode is a different thing? It's the a, it's a, it's a same name, nickname. Oh, okay. Chode, yeah. taint, it's same... It's taint, uh, but also... Do we have that? No. But belovedly yeah, we have known that. as a chode. We have that. You have a taint too. Uh, And then so you scratch that. That part specifically itches? Uh, it just itched right now, so I scratched it and then... And I was still waiting for you, so I, I, just, I, so I, so I just went like this. You smelled it? And then I was like, oh, shit's pretty clean. Why'd you smell it? I was waiting for you. I, didn't, I was bored. That, um, oh, you were bored. That's the answer. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you are pretty clean. You don't really smell that much. Dude, yeah. these headphones. What is me? going on? I don't know. They always hurt my head or make my head itchy. Really? Yeah. Is my hair all jacked up now? No. No. Well, um, I actually thoroughly enjoy these podcasts when it's just you and I. I mean, obviously, I enjoy when we have a guest just because our guests are always so fucking badass. Yeah. But I thoroughly enjoy it when it's us two because I feel like this is kind of like a little date for me. It is. Oh, this was distracting. Um, Yeah, I feel like it's a little date with, with us and I get to connect with you because I don't really get to see you that much Monday through Friday. Yeah. This is the most time I get to spend with you. And it's an intense amount of time, too. Yes. It's one hour, two eyeballs locked onto two eyeballs, and nothing matters but us and the headphones and the microphone and the camera and this light. Yeah, and I really do enjoy it just because the connection happens. There's yeah. the four sets of eyes, or yeah. the two sets of eyes. I can't remember if I said four. Two pairs, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then, um, yeah, like all these other nosy people get to hear all the romantic shit I want to tell you. Tell me, what's the romantic stuff? Um, shit, I have nothing to say. No, I'm just kidding. No, I love it. Um, I always get bummed out like when you come up. <laughs> let me rephrase that because it's already coming out really bad. I always get bummed out that I don't get to spend enough time with you during the week. Really? Uh, yeah. That's so cute. then I get bummed out that I don't get enough time with you. Yeah. So Monday through Friday. Um, well, Friday's the exception because now it's like slowly leaking into party time, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. But Monday through Thursday um we get home while well, you get home monday through wednesday really late and then i just kind of let you chill i'm already exhausted because i've just been with our son and just kind of working all day i can feel that so i don't know if you've you noticed but when you i come off. home yeah. I, I really try to like just be with taika too and trying to take them off your hands because i could see that you know your hair is like razzle dazzled <laughs> so i try to play with them i try to take them away from you know you. what so i like kind of like take that burden off your shoulder for at least an hour thank you what I like, and I, I don't know if you enjoy this too, but I assume that everyone enjoys this. Yeah. Um, is when anyone comes home from work or just a long day doing something that is work related, um, I don't want to bombard them with a bunch of my shit. Like I just let, like when you come home, I just let you come home. I'll ask like how, what, how your day was, but I still don't even really bombard you with stuff. I'll just be like, hey, hi, whatever. And I just kind of leave you alone. Cause I'm that type of person. Like, I'm just like, let me like decompress. Like, let me deflate now. Like, let me just kind of like chill. You know, I'm actually not like that. Mm. I don't need that. Like, if I come home, I think for me, like, just the change of location changes the energy and vibes up completely. Yeah. So, um, what I've been noticing from myself is like when I go from I could kill myself in the gym. But the minute I step foot in the office, it's like, bam, like suit and tie, work hustle. And then I think and I exhaust myself in work. Number two, when I come home, all of a sudden it's daddy time. And I'm like running around the kitchen island with Tyka over and over and over. It's like it's it's uh, I, I get like re-energized Damn, when, that's I, awesome. when I get a new in a new environment because yeah. I, I feed off the environment, I think. And I think you do a good job of making the home feel really cozy and cutie. So as soon as I come home, I just want to bail talk like I'm all day, like I'm retarded. My baby could play with me, could Oh, no, then, I have another baby. Oh, <laughs> Like, God. I just want to, like. Why would I ever want to fuck that? 
because you know I give it to you good. Now when you're oh, but the world, the world, the world. no, and then we get into the sheets, and that goes with a different energy. Oh, but then that okay. part is different. If I once I get into the sheets, if nothing happens in ten minutes, you know I'm knocking out. Oh, that's the fuck. only that's the only down part because I've already been exhausted like three. I've been exhausted as an athlete, exhausted as a worker, and then exhausted as a dad. Yeah. What about the husband? Um, oh. you gotta t- if you want the husband, <laughs> you gotta ten minute before you gotta ten jump minute. on that husband. Oh fuck! Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why I'm so grateful. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. this hour that we get to spend together. You wanna hold hands, then? Sure. That's, that's why funny. I think you get that from your mom. Your mom's that way because your mom's always like, "Oh, I have heart problems. I can't do it." But then she's like with us, and she's like fucking jump in and like dancing and exercising and stuff. And then she passes out, and then she can't even drive home. So yeah. I, I think we're way different. No, but I'm saying that her change of environment also energizes her the way that you say. Oh, it energizes yeah, you. maybe I, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that because she used to like tell me she'd be so tired and she comes home from work. And then when she gets home, she gets re-energized and beats the shit out of me. <laughs> like, I thought you said you were tired. What the fuck? <laughs> like, she was like, you know, you, I'm so tired. Like, you, when I'm going to get home, we're not even going to talk. And she comes home, she beats the living shit out of me because I'm like, Damn, bitch, I thought you were tired. Where'd you get all this energy from? As you're getting your ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, bitch. <laughs> no, like I... Like a lying-ass mom? I'm going to try to be more like you then. I like that. Like me? Yeah, I like that. That Sorry, it's because this big-ass ring that you got me, you know, <laughs> you were smashing my hand. You don't have to be like me. No, so I know I don't have to. Yeah. So I, I think this is something that you and I bonded off of uh, when we first got... Maybe we weren't even together yet. Uh, maybe we were together. I don't know. But when we first started dating, I'll call it. Yeah. Uh, was that we would see things that we liked in other people and we would try to make those things ours. Yes. So I, I like I think you said it or I said it. And we were both like, yeah, I'm the same way too. Yeah, we both really like that. Yeah. So I like that. So because I like that trait in you, I'm like, oh, man, I should try to adopt that and start doing that more. That's cute. Yeah. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try not to decompress. So bombard me with all your shit. Maybe I shouldn't say that. No, I, don't, I won't bombard you. I, I still know who you are. <laughs> I still know who you are. Yeah. Um, but like, and and I, I think when you say bombard, I don't think you mean like all of a sudden, like, here's all these issues. Solve them. Yeah. Like, don't give me that. like what I like. So because I think that will still affect me. Like if I come home from work, right, yeah. I'm re-energized by the home. Yeah. But I'm not like, going to give you negative. But you feel like I got a flat tire or you got no. these house problems. Like it, you never bombard me with that. But the things that you do tell me, like let's say Taika was playing in the jungle gym. Oh, that's with energy. Balls, like all this stuff. That's like, good stuff. Like as soon as I come home and it's just all these updates on home, that'd be so awesome to me. Yeah. Because even when I come home from work, the minute I'm pulling uh, back into the driveway, I'm already listing like what are my top three highlights from my day that I want to share with you. How cute. Yeah, I want to prepare it. So I'm like, okay, so in training, I you did this. You give yourself this. homework while you drive? Yeah, yeah I go, okay, I'm going to tell my bear <laughs> about the boxing thing because that was really cool. Oh, we did this thing at the bar bubble gaming. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, and then Joe said something really funny. I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm, I would like try to like think of the things so I could share my day with you. That's so cute. So I don't pull out of my ass, you know, like I, I'm like, what's the what's what are some cool things that happened today? You know, a lot of times, like because we're so busy yeah. and things are so on autopilot because we also vlog and stuff. It's like I think it's human nature. The minute you vent once, there's not a need like a primal need to vent again. And be, and I think that's where, because uh, there was a time where like our relationship kind of hit like a dark spot, and I think it was because we got so exhausted, you know, like we did hanging with J.K., so we vent uh, things there, we vent things to the vlog, we're constantly venting things, so we have great relationships with the content, but within ourselves, we're not really talking and being like emotionally intimate. So I noticed that about about that and and with just a lot of the couples in jk too like we're very emotionally intimate with jk news or whatever yeah and i'm like i gotta be intentionally emotionally int- intimate with ma bear potato so i always try to like what are the awesome things that maybe i don't even vlog about so i could yeah. save it yeah or i can do the more entertaining hey what's up i'm the vlogging oh joe says i'm really funny let me tell you but then i tell you like the real version of what i thought made me really really funny you know that's good i'm happy to hear that yeah like um i'm not very i guess when it because you touched on relationship i'm not a very venti person to other people about my relationship that that's something that's really hard for me to do yeah and i don't mean venting by like you got to get something off your chest i think people they like to talk and relate so like let's say you had a bomb coffee 
right? And then someone in the Bar Brigade staff loves coffee. It's pretty normal to be like, hey, did you try that new nitro brew? You know, like, and I, I classify that as venting, even though it's not really venting, but you oh. do, but you do want to, like, there is a urge to kind of share with someone and connect with someone. Yeah. But then the minute that urge is gone, you might not tell me about the nitro thing because that urge is gone. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? And then now a chance for you to be emotionally intimate with why you love that coffee. Yeah. That might be gone. And then so that's one less thing we get to connect about. And I think that's very, very normal. Oh, I see. Um, I'm actually quite the opposite. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'm maybe I'm changing now. Yeah. Um, but I don't I wouldn't share shit like that with other people. You don't connect with other people based off of what you know about them? Um kind of. Like I, I'm a very small talk type of person. Like I like I um like I'm saying now I, I think I changed, but at least before if I knew it was something that you liked, yeah, then I would save that for you. That's what exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yes, so I would. What do you mean? So I would save that for you. So let's say I'm with person A, right? Yeah. And they like coffee, but I know that you also like coffee. I'll be, I'll make very small talk about that coffee connection just so I have enough yeah. to have a connection. But the yeah. real, real shit is happening with you. Yeah. I me. Mean, that's what I'm talking about. But let's say uh, this coffee moved you. Yeah. You know, I don't give a shit about coffee. Do you still save that conversation with me? Yeah. So you so regardless of what I'm into, whatever is something moved you, you share yeah. it with me. Yeah. And that's really awesome. <laughs> so I think that means you've been way more emotionally intimate with uh, me because I know than I have with you. Um, because I know that, yeah, you might not care or understand it, but I know that you respect me. Yeah. And, and like I want to share my happiness with you. That's super cuny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I did a bad job of that. And uh, so now I'm trying to make sure that. I do that with you. So even like, even though I know you don't give a shit about training and you don't give a shit about martial arts, when I have cool moments that I like, I still try to share that with you. Maybe not as in depth as someone that I know is a martial arts fanatic like David. Yeah. Because we can talk for days. And that's about okay that. because then it becomes it becomes a little overwhelming. Yeah. But it is cool because I learned so much. But I think the the issue now that you have kind of with that is I think you're trying to find. You're trying to find your balance. Yeah. And like you tell me that too much now where I'm like, I wouldn't do that. Like right now, right? One of my new hobbies is I'm just trying to relearn the whole makeup world, right? Because I'm kind of girly yeah. and I really like it. And that now I'm like getting into it more. But I know it's not really your thing. Yeah. I'm still going to share my happiness with it. And, oh, I did this, this and this. But I probably won't um, talk about it too much more because I'm just going to be like, Okay, I got my joys out. Moving on to the next thing. Like, let's bond now. Yeah, and then you can connect the rest of it with the girls or something. Yeah. Whichever yeah. girl is more into it. Right. Yeah. But I think that's a, a thing that I had to learn throughout the years, which is um, the emotional intimacy is just as important as the physical intimacy. And that, I feel like, is what really is the 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 foundation of a relationship that I think a lot of people over time because of autopilotness, you know, busy day, you come home from work, it's the same routine, work, uh, make food for each other, maybe watch that one TV show, which also means no talking for an hour, yeah. go to sleep. And you kind of people that I think that's how people grow apart. Yeah. Even though they're living together, I think if they don't make that intention to really be emotionally intimate with each other, and not in a logical way, because I think I used to do that in a logical way, too, where I messed up, where I'm just telling you things that I've already made up my decisions. And that's that's more of just giving you a report yeah. rather than being emotionally intimate. Yeah. And I think uh, that's really, really important. But no one really talks about it. Yeah. Well, let me pause you here. OK. Because I want to bring up Third Love again. OK. Just because I'm absolutely in love with this company. Yeah. Um. So they are a bra company, and I don't know if you guys know this, but back in 2015, um, I got bra, uh, bra. <laughs> I got a breast augmentation. It's been that long. Yeah. Wow. I got it a few months before we got married. Um, and fun fact. For some reason, I keep thinking we got married last year. That's so cute. And I forgot that we got married in 2015. Yeah. That's cute. Um, so I got breast augmentation. Oh so yeah, that you already, did. Oh yeah. So that already messed up 
just how what bra size I was, right? Because like imagine, ladies, like you you grew up wearing this particular bra size, and now you kind of have to guess what it is that you are. Yeah. So that was already bad. Um, but even before that, this is where the fun fact comes in: is I never knew how to wear a bra the right way. Like I'm not talking about oh, like putting my hands through like the holes and then like snapping the back. Like I just didn't know what the appropriate size for me was. Because I was. It should be like like popping like this well that's a push-up bra that it you're talking like about this, and then there's like beautiful mountains and then one strap <laughs> should be down that's a porno baby oh uh, um mind. but so i had small titties you know like i had small boobs they weren't small to me okay well they were small for me okay and i just was like well whatever covers the whole thing i guess is fine yeah but then i didn't realize that like if there's a bunch of space at the top then that's bad and then once i got the boob job then um i guess i was getting them too small because they would spill out uh, which is not a problem at which all. is okay well it's not good it's not a cute look when you're wearing a tight bra so then i came across third love i yeah. absolutely love it because from the comfort of your own home you go online thirdlove.com and um they give you this like less than five minute questionnaire like what are your problems does, does the bra strap dig into your shoulder does is that a problem oh cool. what style of boobs do you have because there's like what? so many different styles of boobs there's asymmetric there's like their teardrop there's uh oh. there's so many different styles and their pictures i love pictures so i clicked on the boobs that i thought resembled mine yeah this is awesome and then it so it asks me just different like what size do you normally wear right now and then i told them then they, they, they recommend the bra that they think I would need. I get the bra within like a few days, put it on. It is perfect. If it's perfectly? If it's perfectly. Like ev wow. all the money that I spent since I got my boobs done. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to throw away all those bras because they don't fit the right way. Damn, that's crazy. Because you know how recently I was buying new lingerie? <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty hot. <laughs> Um, yeah, and when I went on there, there's like so many cuts, like demi cut, whatever cut. Yeah, I got the t-shirt cut. And then like straps and like just all kinds I of stuff. It. And I'm like, I love it. I, I was overwhelmed, but I'm a guy, so I don't know anything yeah. about that kind well, of stuff. Well, third level officially have 78 bra sizes, y'all. 78 bra sizes with wow. bands ranging from uh, 30 inches to 48 inches and cups from uh, AAA all the way to I. Uh, one of the largest ranges in the industry fucking dope so that just goes to show you that it's customized as much as they possibly can to you um so i got the classic tee is what i told you guys um you did say they have cotton tee uh t-shirts everyday lace i love me some lace uh and then third love doesn't create new sizes just by scaling is it it's existing measurements again they really try to customize it to you uh they fitted cup sizes to at least 20 different women with different body types and breast shapes like i said go on the website take the wow. survey you see all the boobies yeah or even if you're like a pervy kid just go see those there's boobies, boobies on that site well they're they're illustration but there's boobies what is the site called i just gotta double check thirdlove.com okay um and then for larger sizes third love also adds premium touches to ensure the bra is stronger where you need it Dude, I really do love this bra. I Damn. got two of them off the bat. Do they make sports bras too? Uh, not that I saw. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I love it. And then like all the little accents, like it's in gold. And I love that. Like it's just it's just very modern, very chic, very in. So I love it. It was easy to put on. And they only have two hooks on the back. Yeah. I hate the three hook ones for me personally because I always miss the middle hook. I hate oh. it. So give me just two freaking prongs. They have it. They really thought about it, huh? Yes. And then uh, with other brands, charge more based on sizing. At Third Love Bras, cost the same no matter the size. Wow. Yeah, you guys don't have that problem. Even if you get like quadruple the I eye or whatever. Yeah, then it's the same cost. Because that um, cup's got to be like this big. It's, it's a big cup. Wow. Um, same comfort, same perfect fit, same fabric, same style, same price, no matter what the size is. So price variations are only dependent on the specific style, which range from 68 to 76 bucks. And let me tell you, it's worth the price because I have like the, remember I told you I have like the weird rib cage where one of my boobs kind of drops off to the side. So bras fit so weird on me. Yeah. But with Third Love, I swear, it just went like, foom. There's a weird rib cage option on the website? <laughs> no, but it did show <laughs> me like asymmetrical. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I have a weird body, y'all. Um. So, yeah. I wish yeah. they made briefs and then they have like all different ball sack shapes and stuff and you could choose. Do you, what, do you got a, a, a right hanger, a left hanger? And then like, and then maybe talk about your wiener. Like, is it a left turn or a right turn or like that or too? like a I, hanger? I would assume. 
I mean, from pornos, I've seen where like the mushroom tip is like four times bigger than the shaft. I've seen where the shaft is way bigger than the mushroom. T- I haven't seen that there, many. Dicks. There's all kinds of different ones. Yeah. So it, I I would guess if you wear briefs, you should want them to hug a certain way. Yeah. Or you could have them where you kind of like it's not just one compartment that holds the whole package, the uh, pillar and stones. You want to be able to like maybe tuck it away somewhere. That'd be pretty cool. Mm. So then you want more support on your sack. I don't need support. Oh, then what are you talking about? <laughs> It'd just be nice to have the option. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they had something like they made a briefs because of how custom it is, I yeah. would be curious to just try it. Oh, I see. Yeah. But I don't think th- I mean, I guess I think that's something that you have to kind of come up with. Fine. What were we talking about before that? I got so into the. I just get really excited about stuff. I really back up. Yeah. So I got excited about that. And then I started wanting to talk more about breasts. Yeah. But what were we talking yeah, and about? You probably, that? Uh, and then I guess she got so excited. She forgot to say that if you like third love, there's probably a description a link in the description. below. Yes. Right? I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah so we're going to throw in a bunch of just additional resources and links for you to check out. Um, it's their love.com. Go to the description box below. Click around. Ladies, you won't be disappointed. I promise you. I love it. Um, and yeah. And we're, we're talking about emotional intimacy, how oh. you got to be intentional about it because it's easy to let your relationship get away and let two people just kind of grow apart. Yeah. And it's so common, like just amongst a lot of different women that I talk to, like that's one of the things that um, is like the number one problem with them is uh, they did the, the big communication and the lack of, you know, connection that they have that just stems from not them not being intimate anymore yeah emotionally intimate emotionally intimate, which leads to ends up leading to physical. lack of physical yeah. intimacy. you know i think like looking at my grandparents or just a lot of grandparents and or just even a lot of like asian parents <laughs> <laughs> they they have this thing where like it almost seems like from like 30 to almost 50 or 60 they're the par- two different people. The parents look like they hate each other's guts. Yeah. And, you know, they're like sitting on opposite sides of the table. There's so much resentment. When the dad's done eating, bam, newspaper, or the dad gets up, walks away, or the mom is on her own program. Or is that, is that just, is that just, um, cause for a Western eye, I yeah. can see that as like, oh my God, they really do hate each other. There's no love in that relationship. But in the, in the Eastern eye, is that just common? Like we do love each other. We just show it in different ways. I mean, it's hard to like say. She shows me through her cooking. Oh, he shows me through going to work really hard. For sure, there's love language, and it's hard. It's really hard to say. But for someone that's kind of both, because I'm Asian American, yeah, and also going full circle, and then I see how loving my grandparents are with each other. I think it's that. I think like in the beginning, you get together and you fall in love, right? Then there's this whole thirty-year period, so on autopilot, so on survival mode that you kind of grow out of love with each other. Yeah. And then when you retire, (laughs) when you're finally forced to be emotionally intimate again, where you're talking about everything. Hey, do you want to go with me to the supermarket? So now you're going to the supermarket together. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to the park together. You're taking out the trash together. And the kids are are now gone. There's no distractions because, yes, kids is a distraction to the relationship. Finally come back and my grandparents are so loving you know and then they're like hugging each other and i think they grow back in love yeah and i think um i mean i don't know i'm not a doctor or anything it's the same thing with my parents that's what had happened like um they were so focused on you know just providing for the family and making sure that the kids are doing their homework that they're healthy that they're going to the dentist appointments that they're getting an enriched childhood by playing sports going to friends house um, they did so much self-sacrificing that it be, it got to the point where my dad has it had his separate in- interests. He'd go play pool when he was done uh, working. He wouldn't come home till late at night. My mom would just do her own thing or be with us, and and they would never go on dates. They would never do any of that stuff. And then little by little, all the kids started growing up, moving out. Um, they kind of I don't know if they hated each other, but like I can I, I was closer to my mom, so I can hear all her aside like snarky comments about my dad yeah um and and she was just so unhappy and then once we all moved out they're forced to now be to a couple and be together like my dad felt so bad that my mom was by herself so he's like oh, let me just hang out with this bitch you know uh, yeah like i can't leave her home all day 
um, that they started hanging out more. And then they were like high school kids like again. back in love again. Huh? Yeah. And like my mom was just head over heels about him and they would go on road trips That's and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So it was really, really cute. But it's like, fuck, like. Why did it have to take so long? Like it took like 30 years yeah. of like a high relationship hiatus where yeah. it was just so much resentment and heartache, probably on both parts. But I just saw my mom's side more. Yeah. See, check, check my theory. I mean, I'm no doctor. I'm no psychologist. I'm now a therapist. But that's my theory where um, they no one was intentionally emotionally intimate. Yeah. So they fall out of love. And I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of divorces out there happen between ages of like 35 to 50 because that's my theory and that could be correct you know maybe yeah. what as soon as you hit you're actually in your career yeah because when you when you i think when you're hustling up there's this drive right and then that's uh, it brings two people together like someone that's really trying to get into like this fortune 500 company this person's really trying to build their business it's sexy and they can share things with them but then once you get into the career you're on cruise control now there's not much to share anymore. And yeah. so now they got to get into hobbies and they start growing apart and then they have kids. And then I wouldn't be surprised when most parent, well, most couples get divorced when their kids are between the ages of five and 18. Mm. Those are my two theories. Those are two age ranges. Maybe the majority of divorces happen. Yeah. Like maybe even my parents who are divorced and they got divorced when I was six, maybe if they toughed it out until I was 18, yeah, they might've fell back in love when they're 19, but they just gave up too soon. Yeah, I know for us, when, when we had our, rudgy, our rudgy patch, <laughs> our rough patch, um, at, at least I could only speak from my own perspective, but it just felt like, because I, I didn't even know I was more emotionally intelligent than you. I didn't know that. I just thought that we all kind of function the same way. We all see the world kind of the same way. Which is pretty normal. Because um, you could only think that people think like you. Yeah, because you don't think that you're like the special being, you know, you don't, yeah. you don't. Like no one sits, sits there and goes, oh, I'm way smarter than everyone else. Yeah. And like truly believe that. Like, yeah. yeah, there might be some fucking assholes out there, but like in their heart of hearts, I don't think they really believe that they're like the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then then I, I didn't know that I had this over you. Um, I just thought that like we were kind of falling out of love and uh, I and I felt I felt guilty or not. Let me take that back. I didn't feel like we were falling out of love. I just felt like you probably didn't love me as much as I loved you. And then I was, and then I felt like kind of guilty because we were in that hustle mode at that time. I felt guilty um, telling you that I needed more of you. And then I think because I felt guilty, like in my head, I would try to like, um, I would try to justify the feelings that I had by saying like, oh, I'm wrong. Like, like you shouldn't be asking for these things. Like you should be hustling just as hard as he's hustling. Like, why are you sitting here like a high school kid, no offense or shade to high school kids, but like a high school hit kid who has a lot of time to think about these things um, that, that you want to have more dates with Bart or you want to just, you know, have like longer pillow talks with Bart, you know, like it just felt I felt so bad asking for stuff like that. I know. And I feel bad that you feel bad now because I'm just like, man, I was just so dumb, you know? Yeah, I was that guy that was uh I think a lot of people that are new to relationships, they just think, oh, I don't it's think cruise it's control now. So you, you everything and, and also like the love language, like there's different love language. So like I shared my love through hustle, through trying to provide for us. But um, I think you can't there's no way around emotional intimacy, even as simple as dogs. Yeah. You know, like you can't just buy a dog and then have the dog live your life, you know, like. I learned now too, like your relationship with your dog, you have to be emotionally intimate with your dog. Like you got to go out and do things with just you and your dog. Yeah. And then your dog learns you, you learn the dog likes to do this. He, they, he or she learns this about you and you guys build this relationship. But if you don't nurture that by itself and you go, wait, what if I just live my life and the dog will just come along? That's also not building a relationship even with a dog. Yeah. And I learned that now. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's just a you problem. I think it's a problem across the board. I think. Um, yeah. And I think I represent a lot of people. I think yeah. there's a lot of people that are oblivious to this. Yeah. A ton of people, a yeah. ton of people. And and then in addition to make sh matters more complicated, you're male and I'm female and we feel or we express things very differently. Right. Like um, and then you're more logical and I'm more like there's so many fucking layers to this shit. It's 
it should be a full-time job just to focus on having a healthy relationship yeah like it, it literally takes a fucking full-time job um to make things work because it's not easy i don't think so either it's not easy because i think once like we'll hit a we'll hit like a a really dope peak in our relationship right and we're both very happy and we're like so in love and not that we ever fall out of love but we're just way more expressive and we're more intimate um and then we kind of go on this little like cruise control and then shit starts kind of declining we start arguing a little bit more and we're not paying attention to each other's needs anymore and it's like oh fuck we're sleeping at the wheel homie you know yeah it's hard it's, it's super really hard. hard or like i can i can be having an off day and i'm super emotional and like verbally abusing you not literally but yeah. just i'm not being as kind and as soft you yeah know? yeah it's rough and and it it sucks that it's something that in theory sounds so simple right it's like okay we don't have that much time together let's be intentional with our time that we share together let's put our phones away let's um let's let's make eye contact when we talk like that's that's that little thing makes such a big difference like body language is such a big big difference yeah i think things are always simple when you think about it yeah but i think that's the problem where people don't think mm. you know like when yeah. we think about it you're like oh all we gotta do is spend 30 minutes a day talking or let's go on a date yeah but it's like a car payment you know like when you're not thinking about oh wait i make that car payment every month you're like oh fuck i'm three months past due how many weeks how many months past due are a lot of relationships that's so true yeah yeah that's so true yeah it's just i think i think we're talking about this a lot more now because it's kind of so in our faces just because a lot of people we know are kind of going through this in our group yeah, yeah. like it's i think a lot of people they think uh once you get married that's where it ends yeah or you should have had it ended before you get married yeah get it out of your system but i think it's a constant battle yeah and struggle so i think instead of framing it where like they go oh marriage is between soulmates i think it with the real question that should pose in your mind is who are you willing to fight with for the rest of your life? That is a great way to put it. That's the, I think instead of, will you marry me? It should be like, will you argue with me for the rest of our lives? Yeah. That's what it really should be. It really is that. And it's not arguing, like screaming, throwing shit across the room. It's just a lot of like, just got to work on it. Fucking back and forth, polishing and brushing and, and sweeping and cleaning and not like literal. It's figuratively. Yeah. And then what's going to make it more difficult is when you have a kid. Now we got to nurture the relationship with you and me. So that's one. Yeah. Relationship two is us three. Yeah. Relationship three is me and him. Relationship four is you and him. Yeah. Relationship five is us, him and the dog dogs. And then us, him, in -laws. dogs, in laws. They're, they're all different because like you know the other day we had korean barbecue with your brother yeah that's so awesome right it was like a family we we're together yeah but that can't substitute us the us time yeah and 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 vice versa like i can't just spend time with just you and then expect that me and your brother's relationship are going to get better just because our relationship's so yeah. dope yeah and then you also in the car had an epiphany about that i did yeah about like how um Back in the day, because I guess I was more emotionally intelligent than you, I wanted to do things as us. But you always wanted to include like all of the homies, you know, like, yeah, I was like, why don't we go on a thing together? You're like, oh, can I invite David and can I invite so and so? Can I invite so and so? And then I don't want to be an asshole and be like, no, of course not, because I fucking love them. They're my yeah. family. Yeah. But then I'm like in, inside of my heart. I'm like, I just want to spend time with you. Yeah. I, 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 my epiphany was that I was like, oh, shit, I think that was actually a very escapist mindset it, it was we probably had some issues i wasn't emotionally enough to talk about it so when we want to go have fun somewhere it just seemed like wait wouldn't it be more fun with if we added friends but i was avoiding the not intentionally of course but i was right. just unintentionally avoiding the main issue which is us being more emotionally intimate and what's crazy is as that avalanche builds and you build that distance it encourages to do the more distance yeah like, well we didn't talk about it for three days yeah but you're not even like self i mean you're not even aware that you're doing yeah that. you're not 
It just it just doesn't feel right. It just feels like it's better when there's your friends around. Yeah, it's almost even like you know when you don't have sex for a while. Yeah, and then almost even trying to get each other to have sex, it's like it feels weird. You're like, yeah. wait, what the hell? Yeah. But then if you have sex all the time, it's party time. What would you say then? Um, because you're just so much better at explaining things than I am. But what really? would you say then for people that are in similar spaces? Yeah. What would be the first step? I don't even know. There's just millions of right? things. I think the number one thing is to me, I'm a very time person. <laughs> we all know. That. I know. But for me, like out of sight, out of mind, I truly believe that. Right. So if you don't set time to do something, it's you're not schedule. You're not in your brain space. Yeah. And if it's not in your brain space, it's never going to happen. That's yeah. how I feel. So it's like if you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to take my dog on a hike. When the, motherfucker. Yeah, when. <laughs> but if you go every Thursday, 7 a.m., take him on a hike. Then it, it's high. Then you you have it. And then so I think the first thing is always scheduling it. Don't because the relationship isn't going to get better by itself. Schedule the time to do what you want to do. We haven't gone on a date in a minute. We haven't and we need to. Yeah. When are we going to do that? When motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did text you. And well, this is not even a us date. No, it's not. It's I know a, the, the hard part is also cuny. yeah. The hard part is also like since your mom is such an awesome mom and she watches Taika all the time, I feel bad having. Oh yeah, she can't do it because she's already doing it when we have JK trips or barbell trips or yeah. like other and business trips. And he's such trips. a fucking. Ugh, yeah, so I I do I kid. do feel, but Nadim did offer. Yeah. But the other thing is, so Nadim is super awesome, and he offered a. Uh, for vlog content, he was like, "Hey, oh, right. I'll watch. I'll that. watch Nadim. I mean, <laughs> I'll watch Taika, and you guys can go out on a date night, and you can even start that series called Date Night." And I'm like, "That's dope for a vlog idea." But that's not a real date. That's not a date. Okay. So you, that's a relationship with you, me, and a camera. That's yeah. not a relationship with you and me. Yeah. The best bet maybe we just leave Taika at home by himself. Yeah, we I know he's not gonna get up. I mean, yeah. oh, like at night. <laughs> yeah, and then we just go out. We <laughs> do have nests. <laughs> I mean, we have neighbors we trust. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I guess kind of going back to my own question about what's the first step. I would just say the first step for me would be just to obvious. I mean, hopefully you recognize the problem, right? And you're like, fuck, I'm not happy. Doesn't mean you have to solve the problem by yourself. This is me ta telling myself. <laughs> you don't have to have the answers yourself, but it'd be like, just sit your, your partner down and be like, I don't feel happy right now. I think that would help a lot. What do you think? But I think some people are so on autopilot, they don't even know that they're not happy. Really? Yeah. Damn, that's such a hard thing, man. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even know they're unhappy. And so that's step Did number I know one. That I wasn't happy? And then step number two, they don't know what's causing the unhappiness, too, sometimes. And step number three, one thing manifests into something else. Yeah. You know? And then they lash out in another way. Yeah. And then you're like, and then that person does thinks that that's the problem, but that's not really the problem. Yeah. It was actually two layers back that that what that's what the real problem is. Yeah. Damn, that's so rough. Yeah. Fuck. It's rough. Damn. Why can that? Why couldn't I stay being fifteen? You know, at fifteen years old. Yeah. Like I remember this so clearly. I remember all my friends and just everyone around me in high school was like. I can't wait to be 18. I can get or like 16 or whatever. I can get my license. I can start driving. I can't wait till I'm 21. So I can start drinking. I can go to Vegas. And I remember clearly at 15, I was 14. It was on my birthday. Just got just turned 15. And I was like, fuck, I want to stop growing right here. Like I wanted to stay 15 forever. Like my life wasn't perfect. By any means, like I was highly depressed. I wanted to kill myself at 15. I had such a. Why did you want to kill yourself? I, I was just so lonely. Like I was just on how like my parents just had like had me on lockdown. I couldn't oh, do anything sucks, like I couldn't. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was just such a depressed kid. You could. And did you have aim? Could you at least talk to friends and stuff? This online? was before the Internet was popping. Oh, this was damn. I'm talking about. Wait, 15, 16, 17. So that was when what, like 1997. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Like 97, 98. Oh. Yeah. And I, and I was just like, you need some, some kind of social interaction, but with all that still happening. Cause that's yeah. my big problem, right? Like 
I hate when parents try to belittle little kid like like their teen or kids problems. Like yeah. they just go, oh, you think that's a problem? Try paying a mortgage. It's like fuck you, motherfucker. I'm not your age making yeah. your dumbass that's decisions. That's your problem. Yeah, I fucking hate when parents do that shit. Yeah. It's like. This is my reality. No one asking me to prom is a fucking big deal. And I'm like, it is a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. So even though like I wasn't No one happy, asked you to prom? No. Yeah. I was just oh, putting that out. I would have asked you. Thank you. Uh, no, I got asked to prom. Oh, okay. I didn't get to go to prom, but I got asked. <laughs> um, but yeah, at that time, I'm just like, fuck. Like I just had this gut feeling that like being an adult was going to be fucking hard and i didn't want it i didn't want to do it i knew i wanted to be an adult <laughs> why because i saw how narrow my shoulders were <laughs> <laughs> you i was wanted like, to hit puberty or you wanted to be an adult i, I wanted my shoulders to get wider oh. i remember looking in the mirror and i'm like damn am i gonna wear smalls for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to grow up so bad i didn't want to grow up I think I would just see people's issues around me and not yeah. that a lot of people like my parents never talked about their struggles like they weren't super intimate and affectionate. I mean, they would like kiss and hug and stuff, but I never knew any of their marital marital shit. That was awesome of them. It is really awesome of them. Um, So but I would I could still see that they were working hard all the time and and like it just did. It didn't look fun because like, I grew up watching my dad throw an apple at my mom. It mm -hmm. missed, but it shattered a window and it's like I saw a lot of fights throwing shit. That's so sad. Um, and then there's times where I go into the room and I crawl in the sheets and they're both butt naked in there. So they're for sure fucking. <laughs> so it was maybe they uh, just didn't like sleeping with clothes on. No, because my mom would like joke around and I would take it seriously. Like, you're like your dad's oh dad's always taking my clothes off. And I'm like, Dad, mommy's going to catch a cold. <laughs> Stupid ass Bart. I know, I Your mom was getting it in. <laughs> I know. I know. And, but uh, so I guess they did. They were intimate still. But just not in front of you. Yeah. That, a lot of Asians aren't, aren't like that. I, I think they don't. They're, they're not really that intimate. I know we fuck around a lot on JK News and, and I will talk a bunch of shit about Asians or Mexicans or whatever. Um, but I mean, if it works for Asians, you know, then it then it works. That's the thing, though. Who knows if it works or is just the Asian level of tolerance that mm. high? Because Koreans know? aren't that way. They're out of the more new school Asians, the East Asians, at least that they're they're much more emotional and more yeah. expressive, I think. Because mm. yeah. I, I, I had a Korean boyfriend and I yeah. was around his family a lot. Yeah. And his parents were so loving. Like they would hug the kid, like the sons, like my dad wouldn't hug my brother as much as I saw that Korean pop hugs, hug his sons. And yeah. my, my parents are pretty expressive ish. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess it's just the type of Asian. Yeah. I think it's the type of Asian. And also I think, um, cause every Asian has its own subculture. Yeah. And I think, uh, Koreans, and this is me once again, just my own theories. I think for Koreans, uh, they have this phenomenon where they're a new country, barely 1950, and there was huge Western influence because the United States came to help them fight the Korean War. So because they have a hu huge influx of Western thought, which is why most Koreans are Christian, versus other Asians might be Buddhist or Shinto or whatever, yeah. uh, most Koreans that I know if they are religious are Christian and in Christianity you preach a lot of love a lot of Western belief and Western thought plus I think in a Asian culture that's already expressive uh, and more emotional I feel like uh, you combine all of those things I think they've become like the more emotionally intelligent and expressive Asian. That's my theory. Mm, mm, I see. Because they, because they all based off of Confucianism, and they just take it to the more more extreme. Yeah. But I think for them, they they uh, are definitely for sure more emotional. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've like turned a new leaf. Thank and you. And you've like grown a lot. And I through you, I've grown a lot too. Um, I've grown to um, just be more patient. Because at least in the past, I would get emotional, and I love to argue. 
Oh yeah, I know that. <gasps> oh man. I've seen you argue with yourself. Oh dude, I argue with myself all the time, and I always win, baby. <laughs> but kidney. um, no, I don't. I don't love to argue. Like that's take that very lightheartedly. I don't like to not give my opinions though. So I don't know if that's considered. Is that considered an argument? I like to debate. I like um, to go back and forth. I think it depends on how you present it. Oh, well, I'm emotional as fuck. And a Latina, so there's always that present, fire. You could present an opinion in a non-going-against-the-grain way. Nah, brah. Yeah, I'm you love fucking, arguing. You, I'm a fucking Latina, fool. You love Se arguing. Se me sale el fuego. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Something fire? Yeah. What? Um, what fire? Yeah, I'm just like, oh, the fire comes out. Oh. Uh, but through, through like, knowing that... Um, you just being emotional and understanding that you're being emotional at this moment and not logical, like that's helped me to kind of take a few steps back and be like, whoa, I need to just shut the fuck up, back it up a bit and see what Bart's really trying to say. Yeah, you help me out a lot with that kind of stuff. Because then I think sometimes I'll be fucking pissed and I'm thinking about logical issue one. But In it's an a, emotional ass way. But it's actually <laughs> an emotional issue one, you know, and then you, you, you point it out and then and then I'm like, oh, shit. Damn, that's true. She saw that. And I'm like, damn, she sees me clearly. Then I see myself. Does it make you horny? Uh, No, it <laughs> makes me kind of sad. <gasps> Why? Uh, It makes me sad. Like when I whenever I get mad or whatever, like, oh, it's no, always that regretful, I, you know, that I see that in you that I'm so smart. Uh, no. <laughs> OK, it, fuck. It, it doesn't that make me horny. Takes. It doesn't make me it doesn't make me. <laughs> no, it doesn't make me horny. You know why? Because uh, the power is in your hands and you still <laughs> want to savor it. So, for example, so, for example, if you Mother Teresa, Teresa did it, Never. right? If you Mother Never. Teresa did it. I like it. If you, if you Mother Teresa did it or Gandhi did it, where you're just like. Oh, Fuck that. Like, he's just a poor soul. No like, deep down. Like, you see this tattooed thug with, like. Fuck with, no. With fucking scars and tattoos all over the place. And you're like, deep down Call inside. Call me Petty Wop. Deep, deep down inside, he's just that. That hurt five year old boy, and I'm gonna be so sweet to him, even though this guy's blasting fools on the street. I'll do that after. If you did that, I'll do that after. That would make me horny because I'm like, wow, she's really above it. But for you, fuck you no. see I'm it, petty and as you fuck. choose to still savor in it. Yeah, I do. See, I do. Why are you so petty? Because it's fun. See, it's fun. I I get all cuny and soft afterwards, and I kiss your face. After we times. fight, but if you could just jump straight to the cuny, that'd be way better. Why do you gotta? Why do you I'm gotta fight? Child. Why you okay. gotta fight back and forth I'm for a, like? I'm a middle child. I can't help it. Okay? I don't want to fight back and forth. Just go straight to the CUNY. If you already are able to see why I'm being the way I am, you know why? The CUNY. I gotta move past this. But your ass thinks you're so smart. <laughs> All the I already time. don't. I'm put on record. I don't think I'm smart. Please go straight to the CUNY. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I gotta shed that. Because it's been 10 years of you saying how smart you are. Okay? I never said that. I only said that recently. Nah. In an argument, which means it's fake. <laughs> what? I would never, in an argument, I would never call myself a genius. I would have to, because I'm trying to prove a point. <laughs> so you lie to prove no. a point, you shady no, ass you're Chinese trying to stack, mofo? No, you're trying to st stack your credentials. But you're not a genius. No, because it's like, let's say we're having a fitness argument, right? And I'm like... Well, I own a gym, and because I own a gym, and I also coach people, like you're trying to stack your credentials to show the other person why, right? In an argument with your significant other, credentials don't mean shit. I know, so now you know it's all bogus. Well, I mean, this is how petty I am. I'm still going to hold on to you calling yourself a genius. God damn it. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is so fun. I love this. Fun. Can we just do it us two forever now? Yeah. This is so cuny. But is I, it CUNY? You're what? just making fun of me. Yeah, because look how you, how little you got now. Fine. You're very CUNY. I think you're very, are you very, are you sad right now? Yeah, a little bit. Well, but really? Yeah. We're just kidding. I know. What then? How did it get real? Well, it got real because you were saying that, uh, cause you know that what's really brewing down inside, but instead you still want to savor it and you still. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You're twisting my words now. Uh, if I can recognize it, I'm yeah. backing off. And jump straight through the CUNY? Yes. I, that's I not will what always, happens. Right. You still you do the petty walk I mean, stuff. you know how fucking hard that is? I have to be like a black belt in emotions. That shit's hard as fuck. But if you can already see it, go for it. <laughs> if I can, I do, is what I'm saying. But when oh. I recognize it, yeah. I'll I'll call you out on it. But if I'm if I'm like 
not at my A game and I'm like at my B game. Yeah. And I'm probably going to just like do back and forth a lot. But I'm going to be like, I'm going to try to call your shit out. But if I can completely recognize it, I, pr- I try to back off. Okay, fine. <laughs> you act like you haven't experienced it. I do. I, but I've experienced a lot of the pettiness too. Right. But that's hard. After me, you want me knowing. You like at some Buddha No, level. no, no. I, I experienced a lot of pettiness after I know that you've seen through me already. And I'm like. Damn, she just wants to do this just to make her own self feel good. Oh, that's rude. I wouldn't do that like that. I I hate arguing with you. Mm, I want to move past it. And then I just want you to apologize, even if it's my fault. <laughs> See? <laughs> no, come on. We're CUNY. Fine. We do CUNY things. Fine. And I love you very much. And I appreciate you so much. And I think you're the fucking shit. Am I genius? Yes. <laughs> I think Fine. you're fucking smart. I tell you, when we're not fighting, yeah. I think you're the smartest person out there. And they've told Thank you, you this on many different occasions. I don't even know why you have to think like you're putting me on blast right now. Thank you. you st- then why do you make fun of me if I say, if you, you think I'm a genius, idiot. if you think I'm a genius, why would you make fun of me if I say I'm a genius? Oh, because I think it's funny that you're going to think that you're a genius. But you think I'm a genius. Yeah, and that's fine. So I'm, why can't I say that I'm a genius if you think I'm a genius? Because then you're not humble and I think you're an asshole at that point. Fine. Fine. Damn, that was nice. That felt very nice. Why? Because it was just very cuny. Fine. Fine. Are you sad? No. Okay. Well, yeah. We're we're go- we're at our last our, our last few minutes of our podcast. Are we really? Yes. Oh damn. Yeah. That's what this is dope. Yeah, I that love went this. that went pretty fast. Yeah. Are there any last thoughts? Any last compliments? Mm, I just <laughs> want <laughs> no. I just want to. <laughs> Trying to schedule our next date because I do miss going on a date with you. Maybe maybe Wednesday. Maybe we can do Wednesday. Would you ever consider uh, getting like a nanny? Part-time N- nanny? My rule is if Taika cannot talk, fuck no. No, no. But nanny, that's... Oh, okay. True. No, because I was thinking a nanny to back up your mom so that when your mom can't be around, then the nanny... But then I was like, wait, that just means that Taika and the nanny is going to be alone. Yeah. So, I want Taika to be able to talk and be like... This bitch hit me when I didn't do anything. Yeah. This bitch put me in a closet. That's true. Yeah. I want to hear that stuff. That's very true. Yeah. I'm 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 very paranoid in that sense. What's good cuz you're a good mama. Thank you. You're a good mama bear and you got your instincts out oh, there. Oh yeah, man. I'll kill I'll kill anyone for Taika. You love him, ma. To death. I might I might even consider killing you over Taika. That's hot. <laughs> He's psychopath. I think it's so cuny how much you love that little freaking monster. Yeah, man, it's wild. Like I don't think I've ever experienced the love this big. That's like it's cuny. huge. Yeah, that's so cuny. I, I look at the way you look at him, and it just makes me so happy. Yeah, he's my little fucking, my little, my little chinito. <laughs> that's cuny. You gonna cry? A little bit. That's cute. Cause I love how much you love him. I love him to death. And he's, he's our my love. S- and he's my son. So I'm like, that's cute that my bear loves, loves this guy so much. I think that's why I love to, him more because him he's together. your son. Because we made him together. Oh my God, stop it. Why do we always cry <laughs> here? Because it's cute. I'm going to end it here. All right, fine. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, I hope I don't mess up my makeup right now because fucking Papa took it there. God damn it. Look at his eyes. Ayah. <laughs> <laughs> speaking Chinese now. I yeah, uh, I go, I go, I go. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching uh, and listening. Uh, stay tuned because we definitely have uh, more podcasts coming your way. And thank you again to Third Love for the best bra ever. Oh, my boobies, thank you. And uh, I love you, Papa. And my hands, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't because it covers it, right? I like how I could touch the bra and I could feel your nipple. Okay. Yes, I like that too. Bye.